Coming up, we're going to be talking about how Disney is going to be closing down its Disney Movie Club because of Disney Plus, and also going to be talking about a Marvel series which doesn't look like it's going to be moving forward. But before we go any further, make sure you do hit that subscribe button to keep up with the latest Disney Plus news. Hi, it's Roger here from what's on at DisneyPlus.com, a quick Disney Plus news roundup. Let's start off talking about a big one. Um, it's the Disney Movie Club. It has been announced today. Emails have been going out to members that they're going to be closing down their membership program, and the last day to order is going to be on May the 20th. Um, so this one is a website where you can basically you would become a member and you can get access to a whole host of exclusive movies and shows. You have some different covers on, some, some places would this be the only way of being able to get hold of those discs. And over the last couple of years, we've obviously seen with physical media that Disney are pulling away from it. They closed down the club in Canada last year. They've stopped selling physical media in Australia. And we're just seeing stores removing them. We saw like Best Buy taking them out. Most shops here in the UK have done the same. Physical media is just kind of dying off. And so therefore the decision has been made to close this one down. Not a huge surprise with this at all. Last year, and there were some issues with new members signing up. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if it was all part of the same thing where they were getting ready to sunset this system. They closed down their Disney Insider app as well, which gave you access to free movies and stuff when you um, used to sign up. It used to be something slightly similar here in the UK. You used to get um, like codes. So if you brought like 10 Disney DVDs, you'd send away for anyone. I used to, you know, used to use it. But yeah, so unfortunately it's going to be closing. So if you are a member, you have until that time to use up any credits that you've got if you want to buy anything, or you can phone up their technical support and you can get a refund. I would say, as with anything like this, it's not closing for a few months, so don't get straight on the phone today or tomorrow. Maybe give it a few days, give it maybe next week, so when the call volume drops down, having been on a call center and working, yeah, there's just no point being in the queue when you know you've got a few months, you might as well give it a week or so. You can get a refund if you've got lots of credits. If you're a member, you no longer have any requirements of how much you've got to buy, because that was a kind of thing you had to buy so many a year to be a member. Kind of weird, really. This is kind of a club that I remember having way back in like the 80s and 90s. You used to do things like this. I mean, Disney's one's been around for 23 years, but I don't know. It's, it's kind of a good way if you're definitely into physical media, but it's just this continued trend. They're putting it down to change of viewership and basically um, change of habits and stuff all moving over to Disney+. Plus. You know, so many of the films and shows from the Disney Movie um, Club are available on Disney+. Plus. There's just not a lot of point in buying them. Um, how many DVDs and stuff do you buy? Now, I know there are going to be some people in the comments and there's going to be people watching this going, physical media is king. Physical media we need to go back to. You know, they're going to remove it. All this... And I, I get what you're saying. Unfortunately, the the simple truth is the facts are sales are declining year on year and it's going into what I would call a niche market. Now, I definitely and I 100% feel that actually Disney is it would make sense for them to kind of embrace being more niche, you know, make a collector's edition of a new movie put it out with some, you know, some artwork and some posters and some pins and bits and pieces and turn it into a collector's item with a steel book. But you only release one type and you only release limited numbers so you make it a collectible, maybe in a similar way to how vinyl is now with music. You know, there was a time where you used to go in shops and see rows and rows and rows of CDs. That's all gone now, you don't have that. Um, but because everyone's just got it through Spotify and other things like this. Things have moved on and it's now happening now to movies. It is a shame that Disney Movie Club is closing down, um, but like I said, it's not a huge surprise and yeah, it's just one of those things. But um, if you are a member, look out for your email and just log into the account and just see if you've got any credits, anything that you want to use up. But yeah, let us know what you think of this in the comments below. Disney's also announced a brand new Japanese anime series called Go Go Loser Ranger, which is obviously a little bit of a take on Power Rangers, which is all about a foot soldier who sets out to infiltrate and take down a group of warriors known as the Dragon Keepers. He encounters obstacles and challenges along the way as he attempts to complete his mission against this group. So this one here is going to be dropping on to um, TBS, which is a channel in Japan, on April the 7th, 2024, at 4.30pm. And then it's going to be available on Disney Plus around the world. I suspect it's going to be likely on Hulu and Hulu on Disney Plus in the United States. And it kind of follows on with that recent trend of Disney releasing uh, shows like Tokyo Revengers, etc. on Disney Plus around the world. So... Yeah, new show coming. Again, I doubt Disney will put any promotion into outside of Japan, but 
yeah, if you're into this stuff, let us know in the comments below. Moving on from there, let's now talk about a new Marvel series called Silk Spider Society. So this was announced about two years ago and it's gonna be created by Walking Dead creator Angela Kang. And it's being created by Sony, but it's gonna go out on MGM Plus first, like a linear channel, before going on to Amazon Prime around the world. That's due to it being part of a contract that was made between Sony and Marvel years before Disney brought it. So that's the kind of the gist of it. And it's gonna be featuring the superhero Silk, who in the comic books was bitten by the same spider which gave Peter Parker his spider abilities. And so she obviously has spider abilities as well. Now this one has been in development for um, a couple of years. And as with everything last year, everything kind of got stuck when the strikes had came in and they were able to continue um, with their writer's room back in January. They did a couple of weeks, apparently a few of the episodes were written, but Going to Antler, the series has now been put on um, pause. Now, originally they said they've been scrapped, and then they kind of had clarification that's still in active development. Um, all the writers have been released to be able to work on other projects. Um, apparently, they are trying to rework it to a more male orientated viewers because um, they've had a lot of success, obviously, like with Reacher and Jack Ryan. And I don't think at all it's got nothing to do with the fact that Madam Web and the Marvels have absolutely tanked over the last few months. And now they're looking at a series that features a female super um, hero and going, maybe this isn't gonna work. Um, and let's be honest, Madam Web is an absolute stinker in terms of box office numbers, the lowest box office for a Marvel film um, since like the Fantastic Four film from like 10 years ago. The worst performing one of any of the Spider-Verse kind of Spider-Man universe things. The audience for this kind of stuff has drastically reduced. When all this stuff got greenlit, it was all in the boom of streaming, the boom of superhero stuff, and now we're on the decline. And so Sony have hit the pause button, and I'll be honest, I do not blame them, because they're apparently working on another series, um, which is gonna be like Spider-Man Noir, been talks of them maybe getting in Nicolas Cage to star as that one, which I think maybe could work. I'd personally probably do it as a movie rather than a series, but I would say right now to Sony, just stop what you're doing. Go speak, put phone up Marvel, work out an agreement where you can work with them on making Spider-Man stuff and use the villains in Spider-Man films. Just, we're at a point now, there's been so much, all these studios, DC, Marvel, Sony, Amazon, etc. they've all been churning out as much stuff as they possibly can, and now it's biting them all in the butt because they made too many, burnt out the audience, the quality dipped because there was too much stuff, and the audience is no longer interested in this stuff in the same way. And yeah, the impacts of Madame Web here, I can't stress, I'm sure this is, this is it. They would have seen the sales numbers beforehand of this movie, and yeah, wouldn't you do the same? You know, you've just had one of the biggest box office duds of all time, and you've got a TV series which is kind of, again, adjacent to it, with it being a female-led Spider-verse series. Yeah, not surprised by this. I personally think, dump it, move on, um, don't invest any more money in this and get stuff sorted. Just The audience just isn't there anymore for this kind of content, and they're just, it's, maybe a Silk series could work, if, you know, but maybe after you've introduced her with Spider-Man or done something like this, but yeah, not surprised by this news with the, the flop of Madame Web this weekend. And I'm no doubt if if Craven does the same thing as well, which I'm, I'm probably sure it probably will do, um, we're really at that point now where Sony needs to reinvest and look what it's doing. And all the studios are having to cut back. Marvel are doing it, DC are doing it, everyone's doing it. Sony are gonna have to do the same thing. Um, Silk. Sounded like it might have been all right, but let's be honest, um, it is just an extra, like, CD list character that we just didn't necessarily need to see on the screen, and it's just not gonna work the same way it did pre-Avengers Endgame. You know, that's all kind of changed. But I'd love to know your thoughts. Do you think this is a good idea by Sony to pause it? I mean, whether or not it ever gets unpaused, um, that's the big question, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments below. And our question of the day, which comes from our YouTube channel member, Dana, who says, are you surprised that Disney has or hasn't been in talks with Paramount to bring their programming to Hulu or any other streaming service to build it up like Netflix? All I hear is Comcast, Comcast, Comcast. Now you actually bring up a very good point because I haven't really heard this being mentioned either. I mean, I do think, you know, Disney maybe licensing content from Paramount globally would be a nice, Thing, you know that especially in the US and like that to get more content closing down Paramount Plus and moving it in with like Disney Plus sounds good sounds exactly the same thing as 
if we if Max did it or if Comcast, no real difference. I think there are some big key differences. First off, Comcast um, are obviously looking to acquire stuff. They've got some money. Like right now, they've just got like nine billion for Hulu, so they've got a little bit of cash in their back pocket. Disney, I don't think, are in that zone where they can afford to do these kind of big deals. They're trying to work it all out themselves to what they're doing. Um, yeah, I, I think it would make sense maybe if they're in a strong position. If they didn't have the 20th century and the FX, they might need it more. But yeah, I think we're in this like weird zone. Disney is just not strong enough position right now, I think, to, to be doing this. And Paramount are just looking for quick cash, get things sorted, so they don't end up getting swallowed up or brought out. I mean, there's just how what Paramount's going to be like in the future. I don't know. Someone's, you know, people are circling around. The vultures are out trying to buy it. You know, if they can lock up with other companies. Obviously, as well with Comcast, they have got a deal like here in Europe. They work with um, Comcast on Sky Showtime, which is kind of like a combination of Peacock and Paramount Plus. I'll be honest, I don't think Paramount Plus is going to be around much longer. I think this one is eventually going to get soaked up by somebody because we're seeing that consolidation. There's just too many streaming services, not enough money, and Paramount Plus is just not strong enough to keep going. Um, I only had it because it's like £30 for a year. I got on like a Boxing Day deal. It's like two, three pound a month, you know, it's like, but that's not, I ain't paying eight, nine quid a month for it because there's just not enough on there for that. Um, yeah, I think Paramount Plus, unfortunately, is going to be one of the victims. Paramount Chase Streaming, they just weren't big enough to be able to do this on a grand scheme. But I'd love to know your thoughts on this. Do you agree? Do you think, um, who do you think is the best person for Paramount Plus to either get brought out by or just even just make a deal with and become a bit like Sony where they just license their content out? Love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments below. Go check us out over at whatsondisneyplus.com. Like, follow and subscribe and I shall see you guys soon. Laters.